Good evening. Standing before you once again this evening is Mrs. Ndamase. And welcome to our program for today. Today we don't want to waste time, we just want to get the ball rolling. And without much further ado, allow me to welcome our first speaker for the evening, a son in the home, Pastor Tando Majibi, who holds a national certificate in commerce from DUT and labor and public relations from the University of South Africa. Pastor Majibi, welcome. Greetings, greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Wow, what an awesome time. We need to pray that the Lord would raise more business people in the house so that it's not just a few, but many. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Greetings to our pastors, Pastor Jay and Pastor Shubi. We thank God for the vision and the leadership in this house. Uh, and thank you for parenting us in the way that you have all our time in this house. Amen. Pastor K and Mama Tabita, so glad to see you this afternoon, this evening. We greet you and we welcome you. Can we clap our hands, church, and just welcome Pastor uh, Kinen Bachus. Hallelujah. Who, by the way, played a very critical role in my business life, um, which... Uh, if my recollection serves me well, spans over 12 years. Um, he played a very important role at a critical time when I needed to um, buy shares, buy out members in a business that they had started. Do you remember, Pastor K, that period? It was a very stressful period. And um, I think he got someone from another province to do a business evaluation um, when I was being cheated out of work that I had done. So, um, I thank God that you are here, that when we tell our story, we've got others who stand and say, you know what, I know some of the places that they've been to. I'm not going to take a lot of time this evening. Um, we are going to get into the business of the, of the day. Hallelujah. The business of the, day, of the day is to talk about business administration. Amen business administration. I know that in a number of cases we believe that these topics are talked about in a situation where we run um, multinationals or we run companies that are huge. But in fact, business administration or better known as business management is something that uh, spans from your small business, someone who sells oranges, to the company that is multinational, hallelujah, and it, it, it cuts through a lot of um, uh, 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 industry sectors because the principle is the same. The principle for business management or business administration is the same. Whether you are small or you are a large um, uh, business, you have to understand that there are basic business administration um, principles that will guide you, that will help your business to stabilize, to grow, and to make a mark in the industry that you are in. You will remember... Um, <clears throat> Back in the day, we used to have um, uh, uh, shops that we used to call uh, general stores. Does anyone remember anything about general stores? Um, they would call them Tanda Bantu, uh, general store. Uh, I'm sure Pastor Kay has had a number of those as, as some of his clients. And they did good business, but they never went to a university or some kind of business school to learn about that. The, it, because it takes a certain kind of person to run a business and to maintain a business and to grow a business and to ensure that a business reaches stability. Amen. In my time running a business, I took a business which was not getting business at all, which was basically running at a loss. I believe at the time um, it was running at just close to 100,000 loss negative. It was a funded business. I came in, I did not have um, the money to run a business, 
but I had the skill and the ability um, because I had previously worked for an accounting firm and I knew some of the things that needed to be done at the time. And so um, we had to merge our businesses, one which had the money and the other which had no money. It took a special kind of person to be able to stabilize that business, grow it from a negative 100, close to 100,000 to a positive figure over a period of time. And not only that, that we were able to buy out all four members in the company, not by money that we got from somewhere, but money that we generated from within the business. And so I want to believe that from that experience, one builds an understanding that in order for you to be able to get to certain levels, you need to be able to um, uh, understand the principles of business management, of business administration. A lot of companies you find that they do well in the beginning, but somewhere, somehow, they do not end up well, and the reason is simply that they have not administered their business. They have not handled the, the, the business in the way that it's supposed to be handled. A lot of businesses suffer from what is usually used in government circles because in government, people don't take ownership of government and the administration. And there's a term that is used when that happens. It's called government maladministration. When government officials do not take care of the business of government, they maladminister, uh, maladminister the, 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 the systems and the processes that the wheels of government has and is able to use in order to deliver services. And we call that government maladministration. Or Darufago will tell you more about those things. But in business, there is also business maladministration. You will hear words such as a corporate delinquent. A corporate delinquent is someone who has not dealt with their business um, uh, in a manner that is fitting of a director or a manager. And so they are termed delinquent. There's a lady in our country called Uktu Dumieni. You will know, you may have heard about her in the news. She was um, uh, declared as a delinquent simply because she could not administer the responsibility of a chairperson of SAA. I'm giving you this background so that you understand that this forms a very critical part of running a business, understanding it from within. Because it's one thing to sell a product or a service, it is another to ensure that that product or service is supported by a strong business administrative environment. Because you can sell oranges, but if you cannot count how many oranges you have sold, then you are going to run into problems very soon. You can sell oranges, but if you do not have people that will deliver oranges or that will be able to serve oranges or that will be able to clean oranges, tag oranges, pack oranges, then very soon you are going to have a problem. Hallelujah. You may sell oranges, but if you do not have a platform, a way of selling oranges, uh, an understanding of your target market, you will run into problems very soon. You can sell oranges, but if you're not able to record that I have stock now, I do not have stock, I'm anticipating stock, I may not have stock, I may receive stock, those are the things that will help you. If you are in construction, there's material, there's all of these things, whether or not you need so much or you need less of it. That is all part of business administration. Amen. Are we still together? Business administration or business management, it simply means that you are looking at the administrative side of a business from a management point of view. In other words, you have a bird's eye view over the operations of the company and you are able to allocate the necessary resources to ensure that whatever it is you are doing, the service you are rendering, the product you are selling is managed and dealt with accordingly. There's a gentleman by the name of Mark Zuckerberg. 
He is the founder of Facebook. He knew absolutely nothing about administration, but he knew about coding. He knew about programming. And the best that he did was to make sure that the coding side is taken care of. And if I'm unable to take care of the delivery side of things, I've got to be able to appoint people. Amen? Now, I'm of the firm belief, and this is only a personal view, that the best business anyone can run is a one-man show. The best business that you can run is a one-man show, and I will tell you why. From my experience, having a one-man show, you are in control of everything that happens. And I know that for, for a growth perspective, someone might argue, I accept that and I admit, yes, it obviously also depends on the kind of business that you run. But one of the best concepts of business is running a sole proprietorship, which is a one-man show where you are able to control pretty much everything and you do not have the stresses of people because people bring stresses. But we are going to talk about that um, later on. Now, as someone who wants to grow your business, someone who wants to extend and expand and um, uh, sometimes even franchise your concept, you will need people. You will need resources. You will need to extend and to, to make sure that you stretch yourself out. And that is, those are the things that we are going to talk about today. Those things that will make you to stabilize your business, that will make you to ensure that you run a successful business. One of the things that you will need is good accounting practices. Hallelujah. Good accounting practices. The challenge that we have in our um, especially black-owned businesses is that we run businesses as a personal bank. One of the things that make us and bring a downfall in our businesses is to run our business as a personal bank. What do I mean by that? When we make money and then put it in our pocket. I said earlier, I was able to buy out shares from people that started a business that I came into without having to borrow money from a bank. And the only reason I was able to do that and pay them cash was because I was able to understand that in order for me to grow and in order for me to be able to have what is called leverage, I need to have security. I need to have security. And my security lies on liquidity. My security in the business lies on what is called liquidity. And I'm not an accountant, so I'm not, going, I'm not able to explain that. But liquidity is your ability to meet short-term operational expenses without having to dip into a credit facility. Am I right, Pastor K? Liquidity. I understood that in order for me to be able to get to that, I must secure some form of security and leverage so that when an opportunity comes up, I'm able to access that opportunity because I've got money stashed away. The rest of the partners would take their money and place them everywhere, but I decided not to take from the business for a while. Now, don't get me wrong, one of the reasons why we have businesses is because we want to enhance our lifestyle and we want to build our own future. And so, there's absolutely nothing wrong with ensuring that you gain from the, the proceeds that you make from your business. But the most important thing, be able to account for them. Hallelujah. Be able to account for the expenses that run out of the business. Be able to account for tax. Be able to account for VAT. Be able to account for short-term expenses so that you are not found wanting. Because there's a time when business is not good and you need to ensure that you have enough liquidity in the business. Amen? So financial accounting and accountancy is a critical part of any business. Without it you are going to struggle. You may see the rents and the cents coming in, but if you are not able to account for, for what is coming in and what is going out, you are going to struggle in the future. That's the first one. The second one is you will need 
good human capital management. Now, what I'm talking about is outside the idea, the outside the service that you render, it's outside everything else that you have, but these are some of the core things that will help you and help your business succeed in administration, administrative wise. You will need workforce management. A lot of companies today are investing a lot in their workforce because there's a new term that says a company's best assets is their people. When it comes to retention, people retention, when it comes to um, um, labor relations matters, unless you take care and look after your people, the people that help you to clean your, your, your means of production, to, to make sure that your means of production are not lost. If you are dealing in, in, um, in construction, I'm very fortunate. I've had the good fortune of being part of a company that's in construction. And one of the things that we dealt with was the means of production, which would be our picks, our, our, our vehicles, and all those things that help us to get money. If you don't have people that are going to take care of the equipment that you have in your warehouse, in your business, you are going to run into problems very soon. And so you've got to be able to make sure I used to have a, um, a, a, a slogan that I used when I, I used to hire people. And that slogan would be, I, uh, I train for skill and I hire for attitude. I train for skill and I hire for attitude. When you meet someone to hire for your company, for your benefit, you have to make sure that their attitude is in sync with your attitude. Because if their attitude is elsewhere or their attitude is unable to commit to the work, the great work, because remember, it is a great work that you're doing. Whatever anyone says, you must understand you are doing a great work. So whoever comes in has got to understand that's why even in the church, when we gather we home cells, one of the things that are critical is for people to understand our vision. They must understand our vision. If they don't, then they are go we are going to have a problem because they don't understand where we are going. We shall make decisions that they don't understand because they, have not, they are not privy to the bigger picture. So the people that you employ become a critical asset to your business. In that if you hire an engineer and the engineer has got to execute a, a project, it means that that engineer has got to be able to complete the project end to end. If they are not able to, then it's going to cost you money. If they don't understand the timelines and the time frames of the project, then they are going to cost you money. You're going to get penalties and all of those things and it's going to put your business in a very difficult position because you are in possibly at risk of losing the business as well. So people management. When I say people management, I also mean there must be someone, if it is yourself, you've got to be able to bring out the best in people. Be able to bring out the best in people because they are here to help you. If you are not helping them help you, then you are going to struggle getting your business out there. I once employed a lady who had spent some time in the industry, HR recruitment and consulting, and I had heard that she brought a lot of business for one of my competitors, and I brought her in. But at the time I brought her in, I was not ready to bring anyone in. I would pay her and, I mean, she would talk about all these big plans, but I was not able to manage and ensure that she brings the business. We ended up having to make a, um, a mutual agreement to say, hey, sissy, I I sebenzi. When I did an introspection later on, I realized that, no, I was at fault. I didn't know how to handle the person. She had the skill, she had the ability, but she didn't have someone to manage the skill and the ability. So as a business owner, you've got to, when you decide to employ someone, be able to handle the person that you employ. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the things that you are going to need, which is going to be critical for your business administration, is ensuring that you understand 
how you take the product or the service out. In other words, you've got to have a model that will be maximized not only by yourself, but by the people that you employ. A model which will be easy, a model which will be understood, a model which, will, which can be executed. Hallelujah. A model which can be executed with ease so that anyone coming in does not struggle to execute the model that you have created to take your service or your product to your target market. What do I mean by that? Here's an example. If you are in selling oranges, if you are selling oranges and you are selling it to people that are street vendors, you need to understand that street vendors wake up very early in the morning. They do not start their day at 9 a.m. They start their day at 5 a.m. So when you arrange to take your product to street vendors, you are not going to use transportation that is only available from 8 or from 9. You've got to arrange it in such a way that you are able to meet the demands of the market. And not only that, your model is such that it is easy even for someone else who is new to assimilate in and adopt it so quickly that you do not feel that someone new has come in. One of the challenges that big corporates have today is employing people without understanding and the skill or experience of processes or taking out, because when we talk processes at, at a, um, at a uh, macro level in the business, we are also talking processes outside and beyond the intra part of the business. So if a person is unable to take the product, if Microsoft or if Apple is unable to take their phones from within, from China to the world at large, then they have a problem. And so they need to create a model which is going to benefit them and is not going to cost them. Amen. If you don't have this, you've got to be able to stand and be the one who's going to be uh, uh, at the forefront of leading your operations. And this also touches into operational management. Amen. I must also quickly hasten to say it is not a lecture this about, about um, a, a business management more than it is sharing my experiences. So there's a number of things that we are living out which can be dealt with on a continuous basis. Amen. I know you may have thought that I included this, but it is a separate thing, marketing and sales. One of the critical things when it comes to business administration is the issue of marketing and sales. Marketing and sales. I'm, I'm saying this right at the end because I believe that marketing and sales is though a critical thing, but if you do not have a stable base from within your company, then marketing and sales are going to be futile. You are going to overpromise and underdeliver. Our companies have had a challenge of overpromising and underdelivering because our internal systems were not intact. The internal processes were not intact. The people inside were not ready. Our IT was not ready. Our financial position was not ready. Why? Because we wanted to go out and get the business, but we didn't realize that we need to make sure that when the business comes, we are going to have a problem. I said earlier when I began that I ran a company initially which had the business but didn't have the money to finance the business. So I was sitting with a lot of work that I could not do because I am generally a marketer. So I was able to go out and speak to customers, speak to clients, etc., etc. They would give me work, but I was not able to sustain the work. Your marketing and sales pitch, your marketing and sales strategy has got to speak to the way that your business has been designed and formulated. Amen? In other words, before you go out and call us to come in and join you, you've got to make sure that your house is in order. Before you go out and tell us that you've got a brilliant product, you've got to make sure that the distribution is in check. 
Because if you go out and tell us that we can order 100 items and you can only deliver 10, we are not coming back tomorrow. But if you are able to systematically bring those customers in to a situation and an environment where there is preparedness, then you are able to make sure that whatever you promise, you also deliver on it. Whatever you, you tell us you can do, you are able to actually do it. Many companies, projects, tenders, um, uh, businesses has been taken away from them simply because they over-promised and under-delivered. I can't stress this enough that if you are going to run a business, small or big, make sure that your house is in order. Without a house in order, it will quickly get on fire. And you, want, you don't want a house on fire if you are in business. It's a very stressful thing. It's a very painful thing. And might I say, if you are going to run a, um, a very serious business, get yourself good lawyers. If you're going to run a business that will deal with third parties, will deal with other people, get yourself good lawyers. You don't have to pay them a retainer fee, but make sure that you have a company, a law firm, that can know about your business. So that uh, when the proverbial popo hits the fan, because in business, the proverbial popo does hit the fan. When that moment comes, if that moment comes, whether it's labor-related, whether it's corporate-related, you've got to be able to have someone that understands the legal intricacies of your business to stand on your behalf. Amen. And of course, have the greatest of them all, God, the one who gives us ability to gather wealth in your business. May the Lord bless you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Amen. Can do